Hello everyone and welcome to my first Clarity and Calm, which is a new live series that I am going to be doing on Instagram. So firstly, hello, I just feel a bit wonky. Um, hello to everybody and welcome to my world if you are new to following me on, um, on Instagram. Um, I closed my Facebook group this week and um, I was doing a live every week there and now I'm going to be doing it here. So welcome, hello, a little bit nervous, somehow it feels different, I don't know why, um, uh, but uh, there we are. So hello, um, my name is Emily Petty, I am a um, leadership, personal development uh, coach, trainer and facilitator. Um, I am passionate about helping you um, lead yourself, helping you to lead others and helping you to grow in your life and in your career. Um, and my, I suppose my desire through these weekly sessions, um, uh, weekly lives is to give you space where you can seek that clarity, um, whether that's practical tools and tips and where you can find calm. So I've chosen to come into my garden um, today, got to enjoy every moment that we have. Um, I don't, I live, my garden is a jungle, so I don't really have very much sunshine, so I couldn't kind of find a spot where I was um, in the sun. So hence a little bit of dappled, dappled shade. So lovely to see you uh, and welcome. So today we are looking at how we can trust ourselves. And I've been talking all week about trust. So trusting ourselves, trusting others and becoming trustworthy. Um, I wanted to really focus this session around ourselves because I believe that when we trust ourselves, when we step into trust, um, we can um, take meaningful action. And firstly, say hi. Hi, Sarah. Lovely to see you. If you're watching live, please do um, say hi. Lovely to see who is um, joining me today. So how do we trust ourselves? And the way I... Um, thought about it was around three areas um, where we can kind of, I suppose, diagnose the level of trust, self-trust that we have. Um, so one is our thoughts, what are we thinking? Um, two is what are we feeling and what are we doing? Uh, so we're going to map out what um, 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 not so great trust, not trusting ourselves, so self-doubt um, looks like based on our thoughts our feelings and our actions and then we're going to look at how we can shift in each of those three areas to move into a state of trust. So firstly um, and do share any thoughts um, that, that come up for you as well um, in response to these because it is personal and um, I've got some ideas and thoughts um, from what I've seen in my own life and in the life of my clients, um, but that will be different for um, many of us. So firstly, when we're walking in self-doubt, when we lack that trust in ourselves, um, what might we be thinking or saying to ourselves or what might our little uh, friend, our inner critic be saying? Um, so that might be he, she, it, whatever it looks like might be saying, um, uh, I'm a failure or you're a failure. Uh, you will never get better. This isn't going to work. You need to have everything figured out and done all the steps before you take action. You need to be on top of all the detail. You need to know everything in order to understand um, or make a decision. You need to be in control. Those were just a few that I came up with. Um, uh, uh, another one that's just a bit big one for me is competition, so everyone else is better than you. Everyone's winning, everyone's ahead, everyone's more successful than you. Um, so have a think about what are those stories, those um, limiting beliefs, or I like to call them limiting assumptions, that are stopping you from taking action. And then when we have those thoughts, what are the emotions that we connect with those thoughts? So that could be fear, it could be anxiety or worry, frustration, depression, perhaps a sense of grief or loss of something that maybe, um, you know, lots of women that I work with um, have been successful. You, you being outside was a bad idea. <laughs> I've got lots of lion creatures. Um, 
uh, have been successful. You know, I was a CEO once. Now I just don't have the confidence to, you know, even speak up in a meeting. Um, so that's not uncommon uh, for people to have had moments of success and um, times of periods in their lives of success. Um, so there's a sense of loss of something maybe that you did have in the past. Um, uh, maybe you feel closed, you feel, you know, I suppose the opposite of open and, and relaxed, you feel stressed, nervous. Um, what emotions do you feel? Um, and, you know, really try to co sort of connect with and notice those emotions, but I'll give you some tips in a second. And then, so you've got your thoughts, you've got your feelings, and then what does that mean in terms of how you show up? Um, so that might mean that you don't speak up in meetings. It might mean that you, you know, turn your video off in a, in a meeting or you withdraw or um, you work really, really hard to get into all of the detail um, and overcome uh, that barrier that you feel that there is around you not knowing enough or not being um, on top of all the detail. Um, you might um, use all your energy and capacity to be sort of calm and present at work but deep down you are feeling anxious and stressed so um, when you get home um, that you snap at your partner or your children um, or someone that you care about or um, you know it's often like the straw that breaks the cam camel's back some little thing happens and, and, and it, it causes um, you know a reaction because you've been trying to sort of cover it up for so long. So we recognise the impact of living in a state of not trusting ourselves, in a state of self-doubt is, um, you know, it's hugely um, damaging really for our own lives, for the lives of those around us, um, maybe the people that we work with, because we're not stepping into who we really are. We're listening to those voices, which effectively, um, you know, may there may be a grain of truth, there may be an example where, where you were a failure or you didn't do something brilliantly, but they're not entirely true. So where do we want to step into? Um, so we want to step into a place where we are thinking, you know, I'm learning, I'm growing. Um, the phrase, you know, this too shall pass. The ability to um, step back and have perspective on um, a challenge or a problem. You know, they're, no, they're not getting back to me. Why is this not, you know, this problem's taking ages to solve. Um, you know, in the end, in time, you'll look back and go, actually, that, that didn't take nearly as long as I thought it was, but at the time it was quite intense. Um, I will figure this out. Um, there's a lady called Marie Folio, do follow her on um, social media. She says, everything is figure outable. And I love that, I love that optimism that actually, yeah, everything is figure outable. A lot has been figured out in the past and a lot will be figured out moving forward. Um, everything is working out for good. Everything's working out for me. Um, you know, being late for a meeting, that's okay. There's nothing I can do about it. I'm stuck on a train or I'm stuck in a car um, traffic jam. Actually worrying about being late is actually the last thing that you need to do because you can just trust that you are gonna get there when you get there. Um, you might need to make some strategic decisions about which way you drive or which tube, tube line you take, but ultimately um, taking that perspective is helpful. And focusing on what you can control um, I can focus on um, what I can control. Hi Bethany, lovely to see you. Oh, lovely to see people joining. So um, thinking about our thoughts, what are we thinking um, that um, can shift our self-doubt, um, our limiting uh, assumptions? And actually, what do you want to think? What do you want to think when you get up in the morning and um, you think about your day or you think about your uh, week ahead. What, what do you want uh, to think? And then think about those feelings. So, um, you know, I want to feel peace and I want to feel calm. That's why I come out into my garden. Um, that's why I sort of step into what I call micro moments of peace and calm. So that could be just stepping away from your desk for, um, hi Rachel, um, nice to see you. Um, stepping away from your desk for two minutes or it could be you know taking a proper lunch break or going on a holiday um, we we can have micro moments where we step away and um, where we calm our nervous system where we stop and where we breathe I want to feel contentment um, content in where I am and you know ultimately there will always be a to-do list that I know uh, there will always, um, you know, be things that we need to overcome, um, goals or challenges. You know, we're not ever in a position where, well, maybe we are, I don't know. 
<laughs> maybe my deathbed would have just went, I feel completely content. Everything is accomplished. Um, you know, we haven't accomplished everything uh, and in, in life. And that is, that's the truth. Um, but we seek in every moment to feel and find contentment. Um, and do share, do share. How do you want to feel? How do you want to feel at work? Um, if, uh, or how do you want to feel with your family? Um, I, I, you know, I really seek to be present uh, with other people and um, to be calm, um, to be joyful, uh, to be happy, to be courageous, um, to take action, align with my values, um, to be open, to be open to listen to other people, to be open uh, and ready to hear what they have to say rather than perhaps that closed feeling when we are not trusting ourselves, we can feel um, you know, very closed off to other people's views and opinions. Um, so that desire to be open, to welcome different ideas and thoughts and views. And so what, when we're thinking those things and when we're feeling those things, what actions can we take? Or what actions do we take really as a, as a sort of um, outflow, as a result of feeling those um, feelings and having those thoughts? Um, the first one I thought of is around connection. You know, if you lead other people or you, in the workplace, you are more likely to connect with other people. You're more likely to build rapport. You're more likely to then um, be able to have influence with other people um, uh, and manage people more effectively, but also um, influence those around you um, in, a, in, a, in a positive and healthy way. Um, we, we will take rest, we will know and listen to our bodies when we need to um, take those micro moments and step away from our computer or take our annual leave or um, switch our laptops off for the weekend. We take make values led decisions because when we are calm, we are able to um, uh, respond and not react and we're able to consider all of the options, we're able to understand and identify what we believe. And, and what we value and what matters most to us and then take aligned action. We will have that courage and boldness and um, we'll have clarity around when we speak up. A lot of the people that women that I work with, you know, speaking up in meetings is a challenge or maybe they, they know that they talk too much in meetings and don't feel that effective. Um, but you will have that clarity around when you can um, speak up and what that looks like uh, for you. Any other actions, please do share. Um, and, you know, really my desire for you is to step into those actions. And when you can step into those actions, you can have more impact in your life. Um, and it's a cycle really, because then we feel joy and contentment and peace. And then those thoughts are more positive. So it's always around balancing those thoughts and those feelings and our actions. So, um, I've got about five minutes um, and I've jumped on early because I've got a 10 o'clock meeting. Um, so just to share um, really the steps that you can take to step into how you can trust yourself. So firstly, it's recognising. So doing that exercise that I've just done, really recognising um, those thoughts and those feelings and actions um, and um, noticing when self-doubt is creeping in. So what's triggering it? Um, uh, what's the context um, but giving yourself permission to say that it's okay um, it is completely normal we all um, walk in self-doubt our inner critic pops up um, a lot um, uh, and um, that is okay we're not going to kind of get rid of that but what we are going to be able to do is notice it more and more um, quickly um, I'll just read my notes I can't I've put energy it takes to mash this I don't know what that means but um uh <laughs> there we are um uh so um noticing that you're not alone and noticing when it shows up um and um yeah I suppose I suppose I was trying to say the energy it takes to perhaps overcome those thoughts and those feelings and sort of pretend that you're feeling okay um and actually imagine if you could transfer that energy to something more powerful and impactful so a few questions um, uh, for you um, to think about, really, uh, and that, those are, if you've been following me for a while, you'll know my, my questions that I love to ask. So that is to firstly define your limiting um, assumptions. You know, what is it that is holding you back? Um, what are you assuming that is stopping you um, from taking your action, hitting your goal, going to where you want to go? 
Um, and keep going, what else, what else are you assuming? So those are those thoughts that you are having, but label them as assumptions and try to identify what you are most assuming. What's the core limiting assumption that you are feeling, thinking even? Um, and explore how, they, how those assumptions make you feel um, and then ask, is that assumption true? Um, most cases it's not true what can you find what evidence can you find to prove that that assumption is not true when you found that evidence and you know a new liberating truth something that will help you um, to move forward and take meaningful action um, identify what that liberating assumption is and then ask yourself if you know that liberating assumption so if you know that you are able to speak up in meetings that you, um, you know, that you know, I am good at doing lives on Instagram. <laughs> so I knew that. <laughs> uh, what meaningful action um, would I take um, in my life? So, first of all, do that mining. Identify your limiting assumption. What are you assuming that is most that is stopping you? What is most stopping you? Is that assumption? true if that assumption isn't true what assumption can you find that is more liberating instead and when you know that liberating assumption what is your first step that you can take towards achieving your goal so take some time to notice first um when um, people join my programs we spend quite a long time just noticing before we even move forward um, so give yourself permission to notice to journal to identify um, where you lack trust where you have that self-doubt in in yourself um, notice the impact that it's having on your life I think when we know the impact that it's having we can then um, I suppose get that impetus to um, to take action I'd love to know your thoughts and um, please do share in the comments um, on this. I'm sorry, it's been a, a quick one today, um, but I really do believe that taking action to trust in ourselves is the most powerful first step that we can take when we lead to lead ourselves um, and to lead others, whether you lead others in a team, whether you run your own business, um, whether you actually are feeling stuck and overwhelmed and don't know what your first step is. Um, taking that first step to truly truly notice and believe in yourself is the most powerful step that you can take so thank you everyone thank you for watching my first live and um, being with me really appreciate it and i look forward to seeing you um uh, at 10 o'clock next week thanks everybody oh i forgot to say my um my announcement oh um that is that i um am going to be creating a space for you to um, find trust and to work through this process. Um, and that space is going to be here, right here in my garden in um, South East London. Um, uh, and I am basically going to be running a day, a retreat day called Deep Rooted. Um, I know Rachel's on the call, she's been at um, uh, um, Yay, Rachel's launching her business. Um, she has attended Deep Rooted already. Um, so I'm running it again on the 3rd of November. And this is a day for you to retreat. It's a day for you to rest. It's a day for you to notice. And it's a day for you, for me to support you in building um, the tools to help you trust yourself, to help you grow, and to help you lead yourself and to lead others. You'll also meet some amazing women. Um, it's limited to nine people. You are the first people to know if you're watching this live on um, on Instagram about the day. So um, 3rd of November, deep rooted in Catford in South East London. I know how exotic that is, um, but um, I have been um, very blessed to be able to have a beautiful space and I in my home and I want to welcome you to it for um, a day on the 3rd of November. I can't believe I forgot this. Um, so really looking forward to that. If you're on my email. So thank you everyone. Lovely to see you. If you need more information about Deep Rooted, um, drop me a DM.